This is a stock analysis update for Rockhopper Exploration. Rockhopper are an oil exploration and production company with most of their licenses around the Falkland Islands. They have the North Falkland Basin licenses up here. And here they've had successful drills where they've demonstrated the presence of oil. And they have a deal in place with Navitas and for that, Rock Copper will get 35% of all the money raised from that. They also own all of these licenses in the South East, in the South East Falkland Basin. And although these are nowhere near even having a partner to develop them, they certainly might add some spice for some investors. Before I continue, please remember that I do these videos just for fun as a hobby. And always speak to a qualified financial advisor before, doing, before making any investment decisions. So when I first invested in Rock Hopper, it was as a speculative play. Every year I do one wild card bet on a high risk, high reward speculative play. And Rock Hopper were my main one for 2022. Now in that in the video that I did then, which is 25 minutes long, I go into a lot of detail, particularly the history of Rock Hopper exploration and the, the very the long saga of how those oil fields were developed. So some of you might be interested in that if you haven't already seen it. Plus about six months ago, I did some other videos as well. So if you've not seen them, make sure you take a look at these. However, this is just a update video from that. I did actually sell half of my rock hopper in March of this year, because when I originally bought them, they were it was just ahead of this heads of terms agreement which i thought at the time would be totally setting them up for development of the fields however that didn't turn out to be the case and so i sold half and even now it's actually one of my best performing stocks in my portfolio but i'm really reassessing them because my initial expectations weren't met and i'm trying to decide is it worth still hanging on to this stock or are they still are they really too risky so of course one of the big problems back in 2022 was that they were on the verge of running out of money well they achieved a 7 million capital raise in 2022 and then navitas <clears throat> and then navitas did sign the technical agreement however really the project doesn't get the proper green light until, Navit until Navitas make the final investment decision. And I believe that they'll have to also raise themselves 1.8 billion in order to fund all the development work should they make this final investment decision. So there's still a big uncertainty around this stock as to whether or not Navitas achieve this final investment decision. There's also the court case with the Italian government and we now know that the there's going to be a final hearing on that in the first quarter next year but still there's a question mark on that now should that all come in then rock hopper will get about 200 million from that so that should set them up quite nicely without having to raise more money but it's still it is a question mark and even if it is and even if they are successful there I'm not certain how long it will be before the Italian government actually pay them. Now, Rock Hopper just came out with their half year report. And in that, they say that they are actually going to run out of money after around 12 months time. So we are in this situation where they're going to run out of money. And so this adds a kind of a level of uncertainty here where you know again like when i first looked at them they're kind of scrambling around running out of money and you're kind of a bit concerned uh that all it takes is one or two bad news stories here and you're going to lose all your money however on the plus side when i look at the value of the money they're going to get in should this project be realized and I weigh that up against their current market cap. We're looking at at least a 10x here. So in terms of uh, the differences between those values. So, so there you go. You've got your high risk here and your high reward there. 
And like I say, I did invest in them as a high risk, high reward speculative play. So first to take a look at the sea line project, and this is the actual initial vision that they had with Harbour before Harbour Energy walked away. And you can see here, they had three phases of developing the North Falklands Basin. And uh, here you can see how that would have been producing oil over a 20 year period. Well, recently Navitas have refined that to just a two phase model. And in doing so, they've brought down the costs to just 1.8 billion pre-first oil. It works out that it's going to require about 2.2 billion in capex. And uh, this is the where the kind of question mark comes in, because are Navitas going to be able to raise the 1.8 billion they need in order to get the in order to get the project started? Now, now that the technical finance plan is signed off, though, any development costs that Rockhopper require, specifically for the Sea Line project, Navitas will lend them with eight with an eight percent interest on the loan. And then, following the final investment decision, which should be before the end of next year. Following that, it will take three and a half years to first oil. And then Navitas will pay Rockhopper a interest free loan to cover two thirds of their development costs up to that point. And then the idea is that once there's once there's the liquid gold bringing in loads of cash, Rockhopper will then pay back that loan using 85 percent of their free cash flow. So this number here I have for how much money they can make is actually more accurate than in my previous videos. And we have a NVP 10 of 4.3 billion. So Rockhopper's 35% share of that would be 1.5 billion. Then you take away the tax, which I believe is a 26% corporation tax, and that leaves you at 1.1 billion. Now here we have one of Navitas's annual reports and you can see it's all in Hebrew, which is a bit frustrating when I was trying to look into them. But actually within that report, I did find hidden away the competent persons report for the independent assessment of how much oil there is in the sea line project. And here we see the amount of their best estimate of 2C of 269 million barrels which ties up with the number quote and from that we get the uh, overall project NVP 10 of 4.3 billion and although I couldn't get that to match up perfectly I did when you extrapolate here because this is just the uh, the Navitas share and uh, we're interested in the, you know, the gross number as present as presented here. That's the gross overall number. We do get a near enough match to that number here. And that's assuming 10% discounting. So from that number there, I can then, that's how I then got to uh, the rock hoppers piece of the pie being at about 1.1 billion. So this does kind of give me more confidence uh, in that this is a potential 10x here than with my previous videos, especially when you consider that now this has had, first of all, rock hoppers experts look at it, then it had Premier Oil and then uh, Harbour Energy's experts look at it and, not, and be pleased enough to then do the deal with them. And then now we've got Navitas who've come in who've then got these independent experts to again underline the probability of, of these being real numbers. So so that's good to have that kind of bit of extra rest assuredness there. But really the question is, will Navitas get to their final investment decision? Uh, I mean, I've here I've got Navitas, here I've got a Navitas investor presentation and they have a number of projects and you can see they tend to go 
to just around the kind of farm into final investment decision stage to take out a lot of the earlier risks, but also get in some of the premium of getting there a bit of a bit a bit earlier than a project start. And actually, the Sea Lion project is quite important to them in terms of um, how they're going to scale up the company. So obviously, I looked into Navitas because I thought it was well worth having a good look at them to see, you know, are they some kind of desperado who are kind of entering the deal because they're under duress or are they a solid company or what? And um, unfortunately, when you click onto their financial reports, they literally are all in Hebrew. However, then funnily enough, though, the most le- the most recent um, the most recent half year report for 2023 is actually in English, and it's the only report they have that is in English. So I took a look at this report, and you can see there I've populated here the latest numbers for Navitas. And uh, here in orange, these are other data I managed to get off the internet, but kind of dodgy data. But we do see that it is a company that's building up. You know, and actually they do have revenues. These are half year. So actually their revenues have dropped a bit compared with 2022. But you see they've got a large build up of all their oil and gas assets. And they seem to get all this from raising debt. So a lot of their debt is actually in debentures with then also more traditional long term debt. And I think they must have done lots of uh, equity sales as well. So these debentures, um, they're a bit like bonds, but perhaps slightly more risky than bonds. And they're they're tradable securities. uh, And they run with a 6.5% interest rate. Plus then at certain dates, they have to pay them back. And for the latest one, which was uh, issued this year, they issued another $100 million worth and then that has to get paid back in 20, between 2026 and 2028. So I get the impression that Navitas are a kind of like, they're a virtual company with only about 20 odd employees. And they're one of these companies that they act virtually. They get, as you can see, they actually tend to have a, you know, left around 50% interest in each project. You let, they let other people kind of do all the work, but they kind of manage it like a virtual company and essentially are there to, to find people to borrow the money off and then deploy that money uh, to then take get involved with these projects. So they are like a few other companies I looked at, I've looked at, you know, maybe a bit like Diversified Energy, one of these companies that just raise loads of debt and then pay off with interest that debt and then um, use that to uh, build up a portfolio of oil and gas projects. So they kind of, when I look at the general trends, there's certainly nothing alarming. There's nothing that stands out as as really worrying, but um, it's certainly not totally um, awe-inspiring either. You know, at the end of the day, um, particularly with how harder it is to uh, borrow money these days than it has been in recent years. You have to accept that there is a question mark over whether Navitas will get to that final investment decision. I, I wouldn't say it looks like an improbability, but it certainly is a question mark that you, you've got to factor that in as a serious risk before you invest in Rockhopper. Now, onto the Embryna Mare situation. And the uh, Rock Hopper did used to own a portfolio of Mediterranean assets, and they're now actually pretty much um, exited all of that. But um, part, as part of that, they did buy off the Italian government a exploration license. And uh, this was in 2005. And then they achieved an oil discovery. But then before they could start developing, that resource there was massive environmental protests now actually uh, on this web now actually on this website 
investment treaty news there's a very detailed legal explanation that goes into the entire story of rock hopper and the italian government so that's quite interesting if you want to go and find that yourself but essentially after seven years of political wrangling and environmental protests the italian government just banned everyone from any kind of oil exploration um, within a certain distance of the italian shore and this is the uh, law number 208 and so of course then rock hopper uh, took them to the court and in 2022 they were awarded 190 million plus interest but then italy said that they're not going to pay it anyway through this annulment process however that doesn't always work and there is apparently in quarter one 2024 a final hearing now so rock rock hopper could get to over 235 million for that but of course it's not certain so you know there's potential for that to come money to come in and then solve a lot of their problems but then again it's a risk of it not happening so i've updated their numbers since the annual report of 2022 which i haven't covered before and also their half year results this year and we can see now that now that the all of the remainder of the italian projects are in the uh, wind down phase we can see that they now have no income coming in at all and really their only expenses are their administrative expenses so now interestingly though in 2022 they had this they were, they actually had a profit of they actually had a net income of positive 36 million and this was uh, because they always had this uh, 43 million tax payable long term uh, liability and that was related to when they did the farm out when they did the farming with premier oil which then became harbor energy they then met, that meant that they then had to pay the Falkland Islands government for this 43 million in tax once they started making money from developing the project but of course um, the project never got developed and then harbor energy walked away so they've had that lying around on their balance sheet as a potential banana skin now they're saying here that according to all their tax experts and everything and their chats with the Falkland Island government they say that the Falkland Island government's probably going to settle that for any amount of nil given the situation i'm guessing that when they then do eventually get royalties with navitas then they might have to pay this uh, special tax then but they're saying that it's basically off their back now and so that explains how they got this 36 million positive net income in 2022 but still it's really kind of a accounting artifact that's fairly meaningless we note though that in their liabilities though now that gives them a much better profile in terms of their overall liabilities and their overall net assets in terms of their profitability they're now running with a four million a year burn rate plus we're told there's a potential three million of extra legal costs coming in this year and they've got no other money coming in obviously they've got their exploration and evaluation assets but that's about it in terms of all their assets apart from they've got about seven million in cash okay then looking at their other liability other long-term liabilities they have provisions and deferred tax now the deferred tax i don't think we need to worry about but actually the provisions and i, I kind of double check this and there isn't so much clarity as to how much of that is their mediterranean assets so so we know that all these projects are now wound down and some of them that aren't producing oil anymore or gas anymore they're gonna have to uh, start shutting all that down which is what these and that's actually what these provisions are all about so there is like a, a 20 million potential banana skin here 
and um, you know bear that in mind I'd like to know how much of these provisions are the Mediterranean stuff not just the rock hopper not just the Falkland stuff and when are they going to have to start paying for all that and then when we look at the short-term liabilities we see that there's around 6 million in account payables. And it's always, you notice how the account payables seem to be stacking up, which is always a sign of a company running out of money. But currently their 7 million in cash only just covers their short-term accounts payables. So when I go to their recently released half-year report and they have this going concern Sec, which is always one of my most favourite parts of the annual report, particularly with these kind of rinky-tink companies. We see that they have, um, as of 30th of June 2023, around 7 million in cash, but a 4 million burn rate. Plus, they're expecting 3 million in legal fees. Now, luckily, they did, because part of that capital raise they did, you know, the uh, capital raise they did back in uh, June of 22. That included with it warrants which were issued, which people can cash in only if the share price is around above 9p. So we are above 9p now. So presume, so bear in mind, if the share price was to drop below, they'd be in quite a bit of trouble, actually. But then this is when the uh, warrants expire. So presumably they're kind of okay and they're going to, all those warrants warrants will get cashed in. But they are relying on those warrants being cashed in in order to get this uh, 4.9 million in. So they're relying on this 4.9 million to make sure they've got money to last 12 months. So given that they say 12 months and this report was Tate was given out in the end of September this year, that's how I arrive at September 2024 is essentially when the money's going to run out, assuming they get that 4.9 million from the warrants. So this all confirms um, that we are still in a very risky situation with Rock Hopper. It's nice to know that, you know, this looks like a fairly convincing 10x should uh, they be successful. But if you invest in rock hopper you got to accept all right there might be some money coming in from the italian government to the tune of 200 million but but that's kind of a question mark and when does it come you've got to accept that there's a serious risk of um you know will navitas achieve will navitas be able to raise the 1.8 billion and sign off on this uh, final investment decision a very exciting so certainly 2024 is going to be a very exciting year one way or another for rock hopper shareholders plus also something new is i'm a little worried about these provisions being a potential banana skin as well so there's lots of danger with rock hopper exploration ultimately uh, i've decided that it's only 2% of my overall portfolio value that I have invested. It really was my uh, wild card for last year. I do like to have a bit of fun with one speculative play every year. So, but you've got to be ready to lose it all. Um, and I've kind of made that decision. It's still just as risky as it was in 2022 with them on the brink of running out of money. But I'm prepared to continue with this gamble, uh, but only invest in them if it's with a small amount of money that you're prepared to lose. So that completes my video for Rock Hopper Exploration, and I hope you found that useful. Please read the disclaimer and remember that prices can go down as well as up.